Welcome adventurers back to another Soulbound video. Today I wanted to do something a little bit different. You see, I recently joined in a Soulbound campaign hosted by one of my patrons, so thank you buddy. Um, and essentially we had our first, you know, uh, turn zero I think is what you might call it, where, you know, we introduce ourselves as players, both as people and as the characters we're playing, and the DM kind of walked us through how to create characters in Soulbound. Now, I had actually read ahead on how to do this, so I, I was kind of quiet most of the night because I didn't have a ton of questions, but um, what I wanted to do in today's video is show you how to build a character in Soulbound. Now we're going to talk about just the nuts and bolts. We can do a part two next time talking about filling out backstories and motivations and things like that, as well as talking about those motivations on a... Um, like on a, a race level, so like a Dwarden or what their motivations are as a KO or Fire Slayer or something like a Black uh, Art Corsair or something like that. <clears throat> so, but this video is going to be more about the the nuts and bolts of character creation. It's going to go over what you need to start playing like day one. So we're not going to worry too much about stuff that kind of comes up along a campaign. That's up to your DM. But we're talking about basic nuts and bolts character building. And so what I'm going to do is go over to the shared screen here and we're going to build a character together. And I'm going to explain to you why, you know, things go various ways and, and uh, what stats and that kind of stuff, how to look up things. It's all very, very simple, but it's kind of spread out across a couple chapters in the Soulbound book. Um, the guys at Cubicle 7 did a video about character building and it ran like two hours long and I was just like, we, it is not that complicated. That seems very imposing. So we're gonna make this quick, simple, and we'll get you on your way to adventuring. All right, so here we are looking at our character sheet for Soulbound. You can get these at the Cubicle 7 downloads page. Uh, they have a free PDF for you, as well as if you have the digital copy of the book like I do, we'll be diving into that a little bit. And again, this is just to make things easy for us. So when it comes to character creation, really we have three pages of paper, okay? And then one is creation, the other ones are kind of more tracking what happens throughout the game. You have your first one, which has all your stats and skills and talents and all the things that your guy is good at, right? Um, how many wounds they have, we'll get to how to calculate all those things. And if you want, you can slip in a portrait of your character. Um, I did for mine. I'm actually an Excelsior War Priest in our game. And um, then there's just room for you to kind of write down whatever you're carrying, you know, where you're stuff is located at that kind of stuff in terms of like you know uh, if it's on your head your cloak whatever um you can list off any spells or miracles again it's pretty common stuff that you'll see i looked at a few other role-playing games and it's very similar the only thing that's different really is the third page and we're not really going to worry about this one too much because this has more to do with the party and so i'm not really going to breach that topic today because we're talking about you just making your character for day one, right? When you get into the party and, and using soul fire and that kind of stuff where you pull resources from one another, uh, that that's more gameplay. Like when you already have a character established, oh, what's the thing at the bottom? Oh, doom. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, we have a doom counter. Um, so anyway, we're going to go ahead and start here and we're going to kick it off with this. This is my PDF version. Um, I'm not going to be showing you obviously everything. I want you to go support Cubicle 7. They made a great game uh, in, a, in an awesome setting. And so go ahead and support them. But we're just going to be looking at a few pages uh, regarding character creation. And so we're going to scroll down. They do a really great job of introducing the idea of the game. And this little thing right here on the side is your best friend. Okay. I have to say, of all the games that I have played, nobody uses uh, side margins more usefully, <laughs> I guess, in terms of having a tool. So don't skip on those. Um, they just really do outline exactly what pages you need to go to. So as you can see, first thing we do, we choose an archetype. So what is an archetype, okay? Okay, so here we are at archetypes. And as you can see, uh, this is one of the most baller pictures ever. I love this. This is so freaking cool. Um, so we're gonna scroll down and I'm, we're gonna walk through just how to build from an archetype. So essentially what this is, an archetype is um, sort of like a role that your party takes, uh, or your character takes within the party. Okay, and so it gives you access to different skills and that kind of stuff. Every one of these archetypes is going to give you a lot of information. And this is what I meant when I said like it got confusing for people who were just starting is that there's so much information here that you and I were going to work together and just kind of parse it just a bit. Now, depending on what species you are, 
Um, for example, you can be a trader and have mul you know be uh, all different kinds of different species. And understand, I'm using species and race interchangeably. D and D uses race, but obviously that word had a, has other connotations anymore. Or well, always did. You know what I mean. Anyway, so but species, uh, we're talking humans, Stormcast Eternals, elves, uh, Dwarden, and Sylvaneth. Okay, at least at this point in this particular uh, base set. And each one of those gives you a very special ability. Um, and I'm not going to go into the too much detail on them. We're just going to stick with human in our example. You gain one additional talent, meaning, hey, you're good at one more thing. You're just a jack of all trades. So um, you can look at this to see what your, you know, your species ability gives you. There's some really, really interesting ones where you can make very tanky or very melee oriented, you know, builds out of there. So we're going to go down and we're going to take a look at a uh, an archetype and we're going to build it from there. Okay. So we have here. This is a battle mage, okay? Battle mages are legit. They are just cool. I love that art next to her. Really, really cool stuff. So let's take a look at these stats here. You have one in body, meaning uh, very frail, okay? These stats go from pretty much one to four is for base stuff is typically where you'll find it. Um, the body of one means that she's not going to be in a fight very much not at all uh four for the mind however means that she's going to be fantastic at making any sort of intelligence based thing whether that's uh intuition or recalling details of historical events understanding how medicine works or you know those kinds of things that use intelligence obviously spell lores things like that and then number two uh for soul and soul is sort of an amorphous thing um it could be everything from you know your constitution to how brave you are uh to how well you commune with a god if you are a priest type character so there's a lot of things that kind of derive itself from soul but uh, for the most part body mind soul those are the three stats that we're working with now as you can see below she is a human okay pretty hard to argue uh I'll tell you what so uh, as a human she gets an additional um uh, talent is what it is. So I'll tell you what, let's go ahead and just start building this character, you know, in, in real time here. So, uh, archetype, let's throw some text on here. Sorry, I'm new to this, um, PDF writer here. Species, we know that she's a human, doesn't have to be a, a female, but whatever. Uh, let's say 30, why? Because I'm 30. And why is blue? Because mine are blue. We'll go sandy brown hair. Height, six foot. If we're sticking with a woman, she's a tall one. Wait, not gonna go into that. I'm a smarter man than that. And uh, we're gonna go for name. Oh man, let's uh, let's pick a cool name here. Let's go Jade Hexcurge. Yeah, something cool, something crazy. Uh, distinguishing features. I'm gonna pass on that. That's just if you wanted to have uh, sort of a something that like NPCs can can like, like reference. Like if my guy has a scar on his face, that kind of stuff. Uh, and XP, well, we can actually see that if you look at the sheet. Um, XP, she starts with nine XP. Okay, and we're gonna we're gonna use that, but that's uh, in in concept where we could. Now she has a body of one. Uh, we set a mind of four and a soul of two. Okay, so these are all the things that we're filling out from just that little profile. It's telling you all this information, okay? So that is really, really nice. Now, we're gonna head over back to our sheet. We're gonna look. So she has skill in channeling. Now, what this means for us, pretty simply, is you have, um, it basically gives you a skill and then has skills with nine XP in parentheses down below. What this is telling you is that you instantly, just for showing up, just for choosing that character, are going to get a bonus in this skill, okay? Because it's the defining feature of that archetype. So instantly, just for, again, just for showing up, battle mages are good at channeling, right? That makes perfect sense. Otherwise, you wouldn't be much of a battle mage now, would you? And so um, you are going to get, let's see, we'll go back to our sheet, and I'm going to go to the... Uh, freehand thing here. So it's in channeling. And so how this works is you get a free training and you get a free focus in whatever that skill is. Okay. Now what these mean, if you are curious, is for every bit of training you have, when you go to make a test 
for that. Let's say you had to do a test channeling. You're going to cast a spell at somebody. Essentially, um, for every training mark you get, you get one extra die on that test. So if normally you would only throw th uh, three, now you're throwing four dice at it, okay? And um, it's up to your DM to determine, determine like how you know powerful the enemy is, all that kind of stuff, that's up to them. And focus, for each focus point you get, you can increase one of your die results by one. Okay, so let's give a practical example of this. So let's say you need to take a channeling test. Um, you're probably gonna roll four dice, unless there's something else I'm see not seeing, you know, with your specific situation, depending on what your DM wants you to roll. Uh, channeling, having this extra thing in training is gonna give you one more die, so there you are, up to five. And then, uh, let's say your result, you got two successes and three fails, but one of those fails is only one number away from a success. Well, then you can spend a focus to increase that singular die roll by one, and now you have three successes. And so it kind of pans out that way. Um, training is an extra die. Focus is increasing one of those dice rolls by one. So like I said, you get that just for showing up. Now, the next part below for skills says nine XP. You have skills in Arcana, Awareness, Channeling, Crafting, Determination, Dexterity, Guile, Intuition, Lore, Medicine, Reflexes, and Theology. I'll tell you what, let's put the battle in Battle Mage, okay? What this means is you have nine experience points to divvy up amongst all of these different options on your character sheet. You already got a freebie bonus in one, but now you can either increase that, make it better, or you can, you know, kind of spread your your experience points out to make yourself a well-rounded character. For me and my purposes, for the, you know, for the purposes of this demonstration, we're going to kind of do a little bit of both because I want to show off a few things. First off, let's, uh, let's just get some basics out of the way. So when you spend an experience, you can either get a training or a focus. Okay. And, and again, I already went through the differences. They're just different ways of of manipulating your die rolls. They are different, I mean, inherently. So, uh, we're gonna go with Arcana, because I know that was one of hers, and we're gonna spend one experience there, okay? So now we're down to eight, if you're counting experiences. However, something that's interesting about this is that if you wanna go from level one of training to level two, it costs you two experience, and three for the third one. So, we already spent one on Arcana. Let's spend two to make us uh, real good at channeling, okay? So now we've spent a total of three experience. One here, and we spent two to get level two channeling. Okay, so now we have five left. Uh, I'm just gonna throw these randomly. Let me just look again what she has. Uh, I wanna make someone who's like very like, quick-witted and aggressive. So I'm gonna go with determination and reflexes kind of as a as main one. And oh, and awareness, I like that, I like awareness. Let's do that. Awareness, so now we're up to spending four. Determination would be five. And let's see, reflexes, this would be six. And I'll tell you what. So now we've spent six, remember. I have two left, and I'm gonna spend a second one on Arcana. So again, I'm just reiterating this because I think it's important, it's easy to forget. When you want to um, spend to get a second level of training, and this applies to focus as well, it'll cost you two. So I'm gonna spend our last two points on a second level of Arcana. And that's it for skills, realistically. Um, now, there are some things to know that if you are uh, building, say, like a warrior class or something like that, we'll get to it later, but your characteristics for battle, like how good you are at melee and stuff, is derived from things like your body stat, plus, uh, what is it, might, or weapon skill, those kinds of things. And so uh, these do matter quite a bit when it comes to melee checks as well. You, these basically act as modifiers for your core stats, and you can do things with them. So that's all going to matter when you start playing the game. Don't worry about that too much right now. But now we get to talents, and talents I think are the most fun part, okay? Core talents, meaning you, again, get this just for showing up, okay? And I can't emphasize enough how cool that is. Now, in addition to that, we get to choose two. Of course, you can see on her sheet here, choose two talents, and it lists off the talents that you have choices among, okay? So it works the exact same as skills. Um, 
core talents, you get spell casting, which you have to choose. We'll get to that in a second. And then you also get unbind. Um, for the talents, talents, sorry, you have a choice among, you get forbidden knowledge, iron will, uh, loyal companion, you get to choose, unbreakable spells, and witch sight. So I like that quite a bit. Those are cool things. Um, and also remember, we are a human. So in addition to all of this, we get one extra talent, which is really cool. So let's go ahead and start just basically, we're gonna copy over our core talents because those are ones that, uh, you know, we, we always have access to. So we'll go back to our sheet and we're gonna just write down unbind for one of them. Unbind, because we know that's possible. Oop. Now let's talk about this spell casting one, okay? Let me pull up its page here on the skills and talents part. Okay, so here we are on the talents page. Just keep in mind that some of them do have requisites. So for example, um, a warm meal is a talent that you can use, but it requires having cooking utensils and ingredients. So that, that's an example here. Some of them are like acute sense requirement training in one awareness, which we do have. So that's kind of a cool thing. So we'll go ahead and we'll just head down to spell casting, which was the talent we were looking for to explain. Okay, and for spell casting, you have to choose, okay? It requires um, training one and focus one in channeling, which we got just again for showing up, so that's cool. And now we have to choose a lore of magic. And so uh, they do give you a page to kind of like uh, talk about learning new spells and that kind of stuff, but we get to pick one uh, just because. And so we can be an amber wizard where um, we use like amber magics and that kind of stuff. Uh, and it kind of lists off what the different magics are. Okay, so let's choose, uh, let's choose, I, I kind of like, I like Gur. that's my favorite place. We're gonna go with Amber. She's gonna be an Amber wizard. So we'll go spell casting Amber. Oop. All right, now we have to start choosing some talents, okay? So we'll go back to our page regarding her. And uh, let's see. Forbidden knowledge, okay. Uh, choose two, we have forbidden knowledge, iron will, loyal companion, unbreakable spells, and witch sight. Now, I'm not gonna go into like what all the different talents do in this. You can read up those on your own. Uh, those are gonna be on page, well, near page, what is this? 89, there's gonna be in the 80s is when the talents start. So you can do that yourself. I'm just gonna type them over here. So we'll pick uh, iron will and witch sight for our two. Now, one thing I do want to point out here as I finish typing those up is um, there is a little bit more to do when it comes to spell casting, and this is not going to apply to everyone, but uh, if you read the actual um, spell casting thing, basically you pick a discipline. In our case, we picked Amber Magic. Uh, talent, choose one of the Lords of Magic listed below. You learn the spells Arcane Bolt, Mystic Shield, and can choose four more spells from that common spell list in your spells you know, your, your lore's list. Um, for more information on spellcasting, blah, blah, blah. And so um, this is where it is. So you can just pick four spells from the things of Amber. So we were gonna go ahead and fill those out real quick here. So here we are at the Amber uh, spells list and we get to do pretty much anything that's common, right? So these are just any of them. It's gonna pick four. Like I said, we're not gonna go into them. So we'll do Amber Talons, Bestial Spirit. Uh, we'll put those over there. We'll scroll down to where it says spells. Amber Talon. Actually, I'm just gonna do the one just to save some time because I wanna go through all these numbers and that kind of stuff. So as far as your DN goes, okay, so we're looking at our thing. We have Amber Talons, uh, DN six and one. So what does this mean? Uh, like I said, I'm not gonna go too far into rules, but essentially what this means is um, your target number you're looking to roll is a six, okay? Now remember, this factors in all of your character's bonuses, and the one means how many dice need to be successful for this spell to work. So, if we're gonna go ahead and do a test here, we know that our uh, wizard, our battle mage, has a characteristic of four mind, and she also has an additional uh, one training in uh, in her mind stat, which will be channeling in this case, right? You're using channeling, uh, which is derived from her mind stat. What that means is you're going to roll a total of five dice, and if any one of those are sixes, you can um, achieve the spell. You only need one success, you need sixes. Also keep in mind she has a focus, so you can bump one five into a six, and there you go. So that's how that kind of stuff works. So we're just gonna type this over here real fast. 
Okay, so I copied it over. It's a mess because <laughs> the text doesn't fit there, but uh, ignore that for right now. The idea being um, essentially talents get you better at uh, all different kinds of weapons and you can climb and all this kinds of stuff with it. But I just wanted to show you where the spells and stuff go. So we'll kind of zoom back out here and you can see it's on the uh, second page is where you would list those. Now again, you do get four of them just for having you know, you're channeling in your specific spell lore. So go ahead and check those out. There are some really, really cool ones. But headed back to our core sheet here, you can see we've listed off our basic stats. We have our skills uh, all set up, our core talent as well as our other talents. Uh, and now we're gonna move into equipment, okay? Because that's kind of the next thing here. Now, if we go to the equipment page, which uh, is down, what is that? What page is that? By, right by 100 all right so essentially uh equipment is uh kind of an all-encompassing section where it talks about you know how you get things how you buy things but we're going to kind of scroll down here and move on to things like weapons and that kind of stuff now one thing i do want to mention on weapons is uh it's really not spelled out for you very well you'll see a lot of stuff that says like battle axe um how much damage does it do? One plus S. And then obviously for many of us, we're programmed to think like, oh yeah, one plus your strength, but strength isn't a stat in this game. And so um, it actually means successes. So if you get any successes, you also get an additional one from the battle axe because it's piercing straight through stuff. Um, most weapons have traits. Uh, we're not really gonna worry about those. Again, that's for you to, to look up for yours just because there's so many of them. But let's take a look at what we got. We have a wizard staff, uh, and they tell you in parentheses if there's more like a more of a generic name for it. Um, so it's called the quarter staff. So let's look up the quarter staff right here. It's common, um, one plus strength. That's awesome. Two handed, so you're not going to be carrying a ton of stuff in addition to it. And crushing is the ability that it gets. So that's basically what you would do: is then go through your um, sheet and just kind of copy honestly it really is that simple just copy all the stuff you see here and um, into your character sheet and so I will do that here real fast on a little fast forward mode Okay, and with that, we have uh, copied everything. Uh, so we have our weapon here. Don't worry about polar focus quite yet. That's not super important. Um, but we have our weapon that we're holding in our hands. We have our robes that we're wearing. Um, I'm just gonna throw this in there because I already know it, but uh, your robes give you one armor. Boop, because they are light armor. And uh, yeah, that's basically there's to it. So again, we just copied what's there. We just do the weapon stats that were available down there and all the other stuff now you can assign it to them if you want them to wear it for example if you want them to you know wear the focus as a piece of jewelry or something like that that's up to you uh but anyway and then the last thing is uh currency and it said she had 185 to start and so that's where things will begin for our wizard now we are almost done okay i promise you uh again this is supposed to be very 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 simple and it really really is uh so again you can fill in your background any notes you want to take the only things really we have left to do is determine our wounds um our combat abilities that kind of stuff everything else is stuff that you have to come up with on your own for example your character's goals their connections and how you know they can deal with other people um, and everything else is you know written into the book as specific rules so let's talk about these combat abilities here and to this we head to our finishing touches. Now, this gives us a set of stats that aren't really represented, which is weird, on our character sheet. Um, to put it really, really simply, okay? Um, the way that the game functions, okay, is you're looking to create a melee stat. To calculate your melee stat, add your body plus your level of training in the weapon skill, which is one of the actual skills, okay? Check the results on the ladder, see the overleaf, and note this on your character sheet. Now we're gonna go check out that ladder. This is where things are both complicated, but they make things very, very easy in the future. Here's how it works. If you have a skill, um, say like melee, defense, accuracy, those kinds of things, 
Um, this sheet here is going to tell you how to calculate them, and you just look at this this little ladder here, and uh, it'll tell you what rating you are. So. For example, we know that our battle wizard has a body of one, right? So we go back to our melee example. To calculate your melee, add body plus your level of training in the weapon skill. We don't have any training in weapon skill. So we just have one body. So we are a total of between one and two. Our, our body skill, our melee skill is poor. So we're going to go back to our sheet over here. Um, that's what the hammer means is melee. It's a little awkward, but that's what it means. And we are bad at that. That is a thing that we are not great at <laughs> at all. Um, this is going to be a pretty common thing for folks who, you know, are, are wizards. Or in my case, when I'm playing my game, I'm um, an Excelsior War Priest. So I, I'm all about prayers, not so much the actual fighting. So we'll go back to our dock here. So that's how we calculate melee. Then we have accuracy, which is add your mind, which we do have a great mind. We have four plus your level of training in ballistic skill, which we don't have. So we're just going with the raw stat of mind, in which we have four. So let's see here. I'm sorry, I already moved away from the ladder. I'm a dingus. Uh, three to four is average. We have an average mind. So that's all right to start off with, to be honest with you. Right there. And defense, the shield. To calculate your defense, add your body, again, one, plus the level of training in reflexes. Now, I thought we put something in reflexes, did we? We did. So we actually have, um, this is another thing, because the ladder is one or two is poor, we have one in our body, and then we have one in reflexes, which brings up to two, which means we're still poor, we're still bad at it, however, we're better off than we are in our strength. <laughs> if there's any modifiers to defense whatsoever, we'll, we'll bump up into that average tier. So that's, that's not bad at all. This is a little reference sheet to kind of tell you, you know, based on where your stats are now, average, poor, that kind of stuff, how hard it will be to uh, fight a character uh, depending on their stats. So that's all it is. Kind of like how we do an AOS of like, you know, if the difference is greater, or sorry, in 40K, or the, if the difference is greater than three, then you roll four, that kind of stuff, whatever. So we're gonna move on now to talk about these other ones. Armor is determined by the armor you are wearing. Now I told you I filled it in already because I already knew this because I did it for my character. We're wearing light armor. So if you go to the armor page, it'll tell you exactly what your armor rating is. It's very simple. And I just threw the number one in there because that's what we have. That gives us one extra defense when it comes to anything coming at us. Toughness. Your toughness represents the amount of damage you can take before you start suffering wounds. Essentially in this game, um, you're going to reduce your toughness down to zero before you actually start taking wounds. Almost like um, how fatigue works in some games, like, you know, I think Skyrim is the game where um, if you're just fist fighting someone, you drain their fatigue before you start hurting their health. Same thing, almost like a shield. So your toughness is equal to body, mind, and soul. Okay, well, if we combine all three of our stats, that's seven. That's very average for for our starting thing. So we're going to go up here. Toughness, seven. And uh, this just gives you a nice little total of how much you have currently versus your total. But we have seven out of seven because we're just starting off. We're totally ready to go. And we'll go back here. Wounds. When your toughness has been reduced to zero and you take further damage, you suffer a wound. Wounds represent serious injuries, and that'll be kind of up to your DM how, how serious all the injuries are. But your maximum wounds are equal to body plus mind plus soul divided by two, rounded up. Okay, so again, it is seven divided by two, rounded up, which will bring us to four. So we'll go ahead and throw that in there. Where is it? So we only have four wounds available. So uh, again, what I'm just going to do for, for my example is I'm just going to fill in four just so we know that we only have this many available. But remember, as your stats change, as your character grows and they develop and that kind of stuff, you will gain wounds because remember, it's derived from your three core stats plus, or sorry, divided by two, rounded up. So if you increase any of those things, obviously you will get better and better and better. And then some factions just start with extra wounds. So that's just how that pans out. 
Moving right along, we're going to check out initiative, and that just determines, you know, who goes first in the fight. Um, your initiative is equal to your mind, which you have four, plus your training in the awareness and reflex skills. Okay, so let's go check that out on our character sheet. Um, awareness, we have one, and reflexes, we have another one as well. So, um, one plus one plus four, which is our stat of mind, brings us up to six. So we are initiative six, which is actually higher than anything I think I saw during my game. That's kind of cool. Natural awareness represents your inherent perception of the world around you. Um, this is a stat that'll come in with some very specific circumstances. Uh, it's equal to your mind plus your level of training in the awareness skill divided by two, rounded up. So that would give us uh, three, right? Because our natural mind is four plus one because we have one stat in one point in awareness. So that brings up to five divided by two is two and a half. Rounded up is three. So we'll do that natural awareness. Where is it at? Aha, it's up here. I don't know why it's up there, but whatever. So we'll put three. And metal. Metal is your drive to succeed and your will to survive. It represents your fighting spirit and the well of reserves you can tap into when things look their worst. It's a finite resource that is used to fuel a number of talents and miracles and is used during combat to take extra actions, okay? Um, your metal is equal to your soul divided by two, rounded up. Well, our soul is obviously uh, two, so divided in two is one. Okay, so we'll go back to our sheet here and we'll just say, one and because it's a spendable resources uh you have to count how many you have versus your total so our total is one we still have one of one and boom with that we are finished we are now ready to go everything else here in this section is about how much it takes to um go from you know how to level up essentially and we are not going to worry about that right now again this is just about explaining it i do like the the character sheet breakdown they do a great job of walking you through everything the only part that was really confusing to me was the latter meaning i i feel like that section wasn't pronounced enough of you know um we put like our you know our uh, melee potential was poor our uh, accuracy was average and our defense was poor, that kind of stuff where I didn't feel like that was explained super well. So I wanted to go through that with you. And it all comes down, like I said, to that little, they call it a ladder, uh, this thing right here of just what are your stats? Here's the rating. And then these will grow over time. As you start pouring, you know, experience points into the relevant things, these will go up probably much faster than anything else, to be perfectly honest with you, because they're the derived very 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 simply from talents and that kind of stuff so with this we now actually have a functional character uh we have uh, jade hex scourge the battle mage human um we have her stats listed out her skills that she's good at so now you can quick reference you know everything like that uh we mentioned we walked through the training and the focus and that kind of stuff i for some reason i wish i had thought about it but i didn't put anything into focus uh, you basically spend experience the exact same way you just get to choose um as far as goals go that's something i suggest you take up with your dm and like you know kind of work and, and kind of understand what that means uh, in the context of your guys' story. Talents, we listed them all out. Remember, if you're human, you get an additional one, which I didn't list, but you just do. Um, we got spellcasting and uh, unbinding free. We chose the other two, and uh, we're just going to put human's choice there. It's not the best choice, it's human's choice. So, uh, then we go over here, we filled in all of our combat abilities for quick reference. We got our weapon down here, so we understand how to use that. The pool and the focus thing, don't worry about that too much right now. Uh, as far as the other stuff, initiative, armor, metal, toughness, how many wounds your character has, and then you can fill out the background and stuff. And we also um, set up their inventory. So with that, we actually have a total functional character. Now I know that that can seem like a large information dump, right? But essentially what it is, is just going through the basic information they give you about your archetype, choosing a species to go along with it, if you have a choice, a lot of them don't. And then um, working through what's on that little page, making your choices based on what your character should be like in terms of your narrative, and just kind of constructing it from there. And then the rest of it, honestly, is very simple. All we did really is just transfer information around the sheet, right? Um, really, once you get this character sheet all set up, 
things go very smoothly. And the reason I say that is because you've already done the hard part of one, choosing the modifiers for stuff like, you know, metal or uh, what else is there? My mind's totally blanking right now, of course. Um, you know, when it has you derive things like your uh, attack accuracy or melee accuracy, accuracy with a gun or defense, where it's a base stat plus whatever you rank in a skill, a very specific one, will make you better or whatever. And then you go from poor to average, that kind of stuff. My point is you've already done all the hard work. And so now this acts as a very nice quick reference sheet for you to take during your journeys. If this video was helpful to you at all, let me know. I would, I would really like to know that because um, I'll be honest with you, Soulbound is something that lately intrigues me more than actual Age of Sigmar, the actual full tabletop military, you know, not military, you know what I mean, like the battle game is what I'm trying to say, uh, because it really just fleshes out the world in new and unique ways, and uh, I'm excited to jump into it with you all. So if this kind of content helps you, please let me know, because it really does encourage me to keep going. Share it with friends if you're getting into uh, soulbound RPGs, that kind of stuff, and look forward to catching you in my next video. Happy Wargaming! Hey everybody, I hope you enjoyed that video. It was made possible by the folks over here to the left. These are my top supporters over here on YouTube and on Patreon that keep this channel going. If you'd like to learn more about how to become a supporter and get some cool things in the process like exclusive pictures and interactions with me and get your questions answers here on the channel, go ahead and click any of the links down below or the join button on the community page over on YouTube. Regardless of your choice, I wanted to thank you so much for joining me with this video and I look forward to seeing you in my next one. Happy Wargaming.